Good afternoon, my brothers and sisters. I'm happy to be able to address you today, even though we're not able to be together to worship in person. Uh, this is an important and a significant time in our lives, and none of us have seen anything quite like this. Uh, there are many people who have heard and uh, over the years and sermons have been preached about the days would come when the churches would be shut and we wouldn't be able to worship. And people wondered how in the world would that ever happen. Well, here we are. We see it. It's not like we expected. It's not a result of religious persecution, but a re result of a virus that is uh, changing the life of the world, really, and certainly the life of the American people as we know it. And it's likely that even after this contagion is over, that some of these changes uh, will remain in place. Right now, we're in a situation where every church in the Allegheny East Conference is closed for at least two weeks, this week and next week. Uh, we don't know how long this virus will be um, a threat or how long that uh, we will be required to keep our doors closed. During this time, we're not allowed to have any other gatherings like prayer meetings, uh, pathfinder meetings, and so forth. This is also a time when many of our sister conferences are experiencing the same thing in Northeastern Conference because of the state of emergency in the state of New York, uh, the churches in Northeastern Conference are closed. Because of the state of emergency that in, in the state of Ohio, our churches in the Allegheny West Conference are closed as well. This is a time that we never thought we'd see, but it's a time, uh, I think, of great opportunity. Let me first of all talk to you a little bit about how we got to this place. Most of you have been watching TV and you've been watching all these things about the coronavirus. One of the things that we do need to know is that there's a lot of information, but there's also a lot of disinformation about it. I heard something fairly ridiculous. It was so ridiculous, I thought someone was joking when they said it, but uh, there are people who are actually saying that black people are immune to this disease. They can't get it. Well, that's absolutely not true. Uh, we had a couple of NBA players who came down with it, and they were black. Um, we also have had information or disinformation that says, well, um, uh, you can save yourself or you can protect yourself by wearing masks and so forth. And so uh, we, have, we have people who are hoarding masks. I just heard on the news a few days ago where someone in one of the Jewish hospitals in New York had actually... Uh, taken masks that were meant for the hospital personnel to utilize and had stolen them and uh, probably was selling them. Uh, people are buying up um, hand sanitizers. You can hardly find it anywhere. And when you find it, it's usually at an inflated price. Um, I went to the store the other day, couldn't find any bleach. For some reason, people are hoarding toilet paper um, and buying out things like that. Much of it is an overreaction. But uh, you can understand why, because people don't understand this virus. I'm not a, an epidemiologist, but I will tell you what we do know about this virus and what we don't know. We do know that this virus is in the category of a lot of other viruses, a lot of other coronaviruses, such as um, the common cold. What we also know about this virus is that it has it spreads pretty quickly. It has an incubation period of about two weeks, which is why people who have been close to folks who have had this virus are asked to self-quarantine themselves for 14 days because if you've got it, you'll know sometime within that time. Unlike the flu, the common flu and the common cold, this is a virus that doesn't affect the nas nasal passages as much as it affects the other parts of the body, particularly the, the chest uh, and, the, uh, and the throat. So that people who get this uh, often develop pneumonia and it becomes very serious. Now, the fact also is that most of the people who get the, the coronavirus will not get sick, will not get seriously ill. I shouldn't say they wouldn't get sick, They'll get, they won't get seriously ill. Uh, they'll go through a, a bout and they'll heal and they'll be fine. But there are people who are at risk. If you have underlying health conditions that um, uh, have 
worked against your immune system, such as heart disease, cancer, diabetes. Uh, these are problems that make it difficult for you to recover successfully if you get the coronavirus. So these are populations that are at risk. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a situation also for uh, people who are elderly. Um, now they say elderly is uh, anywhere between 60 and 80. Um, they say over 60, and certainly if you're 80 or over, that becomes very, age becomes a factor because the immune system doesn't bounce back as fast. So these are populations that need to be very careful. Uh, the thing about this coronavirus that makes people really scared is not that so many people have died. There are people who have died that's not the large numbers yet. I mean, we lose anywhere between 20 and 50,000 people every year from the common flu. But here's the thing, here's the difference. The difference is the lethality rate, that is the rate of killing, is 10 times greater with this virus than with the flu. So that if you are in one of those groups that's at risk and you get this uh, virus, you are 10 times more likely to die than if you get the flu. And that's why people are so scared about it. And because it's a new thing, which is why it's really, it's called 19, because it was discovered in, 19, in 2019. People don't really know anything about it. And out of an abundance of caution, we're shutting down everything everywhere. Um, you look at it on the news, uh, sporting events, any kind of large gatherings, almost everywhere have been shut down. Um, when the NBA, when the NCAA, uh, March Madness, when the Major League Baseball and when the National Hockey League all shut down their, uh, their, their programs and their games, then we know that there's a real problem. So, so, what, so what we're doing out of an abundance of caution, uh, the Allegheny East Conference is cooperating with our state officials and closing down our schools and our churches. All of our schools are closed down uh, until the 30th of, of uh, March. All of our churches are closed down this week and next week. We don't know what's going to happen after that. But for this week and next week, our churches are closed down, and we're encouraged to find other ways of keeping in contact, of worshiping together or having a worship atmosphere, of being able to talk together, to pray together, without necessarily being together as a congregation. Now, while this may be a challenge and certainly is not what we're accustomed to, it's a time of great opportunity and I'm excited about it because it gives us an opportunity to use uh, our technology in ways that we've not done before and, then we, and we could have. Um, here's what I'm encouraging you to do. First of all, I'm encouraging all of you to use this Sabbath when we won't be here in the church worshiping together as a time of prayer, of perhaps fasting, of talking to people who uh, on the phone who uh, need to be talked to and prayed with. This is a time when we really as a group need to come together in prayer. We have some prayer lines in this church and I hope that our prayer lines are being more active than ever as we pray for each other because we really need to pray that God will give us the guidance that we need in these, in these terrible times. We have not known anything like this to happen before. Trinity Temple in particular has always been a church that's prided itself that regardless of the circumstances, this church has been open for its congregants and for its community. The only time since I've been here that Trinity Temple has been closed was a few years ago when we had a bad snowstorm that closed the entire state of New Jersey. That was the only time this church was closed since I've been the pastor. But this is something very, very different. The second thing that we have to recognize is that this is a chance for us to do some things with technology that we haven't done before. Most of you who will be watching me will be watching me on Facebook uh, or on YouTube and you, you have a uh, uh, you have your phones, you have your, your tablets, and so forth. And this will give you an opportunity not only to review what I'm saying today, but to share it with somebody else. You can send a link to someone else, 
and we can communicate all over the country. Now, we should have been doing this a long time ago, and we have been slow in doing this. We're being pushed into doing something that we should have been doing a long time ago. Uh, we're going to be experimenting with having um, interactive Sabbath school classes and other kinds of lessons, and I'm going to be putting together some thoughts. I know I put together a pastor's page every week, but one of the things I've been urged by our communication department to do is to put it together on a live on a live feed or on a, a, a YouTube so that you could see me say it rather than just read it. And I'm going to start doing that. So we are planning to do some different things. We're, we're trying a lot of different things. I wish we could I could say we're doing it because we thought of doing it. But we're doing it because we have to do it. We have to do something different. And we have to do something right now. Now, what is life going to be like when we come back to this church? Because the time will come when this will be over and we will come back to the church. I want to assure the church members, every last one of you, that our number one concern is your health. And so we have talked about what we need to do at the church. And during this period of time when the church is going to be closed, we're going to have a professional group of uh, cleaners to come in and professionally sanitize the church. I don't mean clean it. We clean it all the time, but professionally sanitize the church, professionally shampoo and sanitize the pews, professionally sanitize the other hard surfaces in the church that people touch, uh, upstairs and down. When you come back into this church, we really want to smell like you've walked into a place that's just been sanitized. We will, of course, have... Um, hand sanitizers available in appropriate locations and everything for your convenience so that you can stay healthy. We are a church that uh, not only teaches faith, and some people have said, why are you closing the church? Where's your faith? Well, we're also a church of health. And if you look at what the Bible says, um, in the biblical times, particularly when the children of Israel were coming out of, out of uh, slavery, Moses told the people, Moses told the people to, um, uh, if they had a, a, a communicable disease, that you put them outside the camp. And so the idea of quarantine actually is a very biblical idea. We want, we're also advising people, if you are sick, if you don't feel good, if you got a runny nose and, and, and you have a cold, stay at home. We love you, but we don't want to, you to get sick or to expose yourself to somebody else who may be sick and get sicker. Just stay at home and get well. We're going to do everything we can to make our experiences at church better in the future. And so that is our plan going forward. I want to give you just a little message. And um, this is something I hope you will think about. Um, in the book of Luke, chapter... Luke chapter 21, verse 25. Jesus is talking about the signs of his coming. And in verse 25, it says, There will be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and on the earth's distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the uh, waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming upon the earth. This is one of the things that's a characteristic of the last days. The idea that so many things will be happening, that people will, will be in perplexity, and there will be distress of nations. You talk about distress of nations. Here we have, for instance, in, uh, in China, they shut down a whole city of eight and a half million people. Nobody could go anywhere. Everybody had to stay at home. In South Korea, they've shut down big portions of that, of that uh, 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 country, and people have been tested by the thousands every day. In Italy, the whole city, the whole uh, state, uh, country rather, is quarantined. And uh, for instance, in Italy, even funerals and weddings are banned right now. In the United States, churches are closed this weekend. Sporting events are closed. Concerts, all kinds of other gatherings. Disneyland, the happiest place on earth, is closed. P 
People really don't know what to do, and, and our politicians are fighting over it. Uh, our president's not taking blame for anything, he says. We've got all kinds of things going on because people don't know what's going on, and in their perplexities, they are just trying to find stuff. This is what the Bible predicted would happen. This is not something that we ought to be surprised about or frightened about because God predicted that it would happen and Jesus said so. But this is what it says later on in verse 28 of Luke chapter 21. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. Now that's the message I want to leave with you today. If, if you don't think about anything else, think about the fact that this is the time that Jesus said we should be most hopeful, most expected, most enthusiastic, because we're recognizing that our time of redemption draws near. Everybody else is upset and, and afraid. They're wondering what's going to happen. What's going to happen to my work? I'm a contract worker. I don't get paid. Uh, to stay at home. I can't work from home. Uh, my business is falling off because people are not coming to these events. How will I feed my family? Everybody's worried about these different things. But God's people have to remember that these things were predicted to happen before Jesus came. But when you see them, understand that this is the sign that his coming is near. As Seventh-day Adventists, we preached about the second coming for a long, long time. This is all I've heard growing up about Jesus coming. But it seems that over the years, we have lost that sense of the, of the imminent return of our Savior. And we said, well, we just got to do business. And he does say do business until I come. But we just going to do business and forget about the coming. This reminds us that the coming is near and very near. So my brothers and sisters, as Jesus has said, when you see all these things happening, and we see them happening, look up. Lift up your heads. This is not a time to be sorrowful, not a time to be depressed, not a time to feel bad. Look up. Rejoice for your redemption draws nigh. We look forward to meeting with you next Sabbath in this regard. And hopefully, very soon, we'll be able to meet with you in, per in person. Meanwhile, may the Lord bless you and may he keep you. May his face shine upon you. And even though we're not meeting together in person, the Holy Spirit, who is everywhere at the same time, is meeting with each one of us. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your Holy Spirit and his power. Be with us and bless us throughout this Sabbath and the days to come. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.